some debris. I can't believe that. It's filled <laughs> with debris inside there. <laughs> so are you willing to finally concede that, uh, although you did better than us, this one's still gotta go? I concede, we're not gonna <laughs> vacuum the entire road. Uh, you know, that's all well and good, and we all had fun on these projects, but now we've gotta actually solve this problem for real. <laughs> it's starting from scratch, pretty much, so I think we need to head back to the shop and uh, do some brainstorming. Come up with something. I don't think there's any question in anyone's mind that that thing is not practical on a large scale and that it wouldn't work in the real world out here on a dirt road. The Smash Lab team has had a big setback as they try to build a truck that won't roll. We're not going out there. The gyro blew. The sucker sucked. Oh my gosh. And they need a solution pronto. Well, is there anything we can salvage from the gyro? We're not building a huge gyro. Sensor wise, okay. Like a gyro can sense how much you're about to tip. How about this? You know, originally the idea of the gyro was to have it impart a load and keep it upright. Why don't we actually tilt the load, articulate the load, lean it just like you would, just like you said on a motorcycle. Yep. We've got some cylinders back there, four and a half inch. I think they're about a foot long. They might do it. They're good for 3,000 PSI. So the question is, will those do the job and can we tilt the load far enough to prevent that truck from rolling over? We could definitely modify the cradle to tilt. That's not a problem. Fabrication-wise, I think it's feasible. I just think dynamics-wise, it's a lot more complicated. So, should be, I'm not trusting. I think we need to run some numbers. Yeah. Now, why not you guys sure run the numbers good. and then uh, Nat and I will figure out how we can articulate the truck. Yeah. Sounds good. The team plans to fit their logging truck with two tilting pivots. An electronic trigger system senses curves, sending a signal to hydraulic cylinders that tilt the load. But before they start, Chuck and Deanne are going to check that the numbers add up. Their hydraulic cylinders have to deliver lots of lift to shift a 60,000 pound load. First objective is to see where the center of mass is, calculate that, and then figure out how much we need to shift it based on the data we got in our test. Right, and in order to do that, we've got to know how much force we need to shift that mass that much. Right, we're limited to the cylinders that we have, so we need to calculate how much force we're going to get out of them, where we place them on the cradle, and then know that distance and if that, that travel is enough. It's a complex set of equations. The key is to move the center of gravity of the truck by tilting the load far enough. Well, we've got a decision. We've been running the numbers over and over and over again, and the good news is it'll work. But we have to make it to the spec. Okay. So this needs to be raised to seven inches from the base to there. If we get full engagement all the way down, it should work, in theory. Cool. Well, we got work to do. Yeah, all right. The Smash Lab team is taking a big gamble. For the first time, they're going straight from the drawing board to the full-scale test rig. Boy, coming yeah. in hot. They've only got one chance to get it right. The Fanulin Gadget are veteran fabricators. They'll weld the pivoting forks onto the truck. Every piece of both pivots has to withstand huge shock loads. And just one cracked weld could bring the load crashing down. Off of here we have the hydraulic rams, the cradle, it all moves. This has to pivot. It can be a little tight because it's under a lot of load, obviously, but uh, it should work. All right, ready? Hey. With the pivots welded, Nathaniel and Gadget can fit the forks that'll hold the timber. Whoa. All right. Come on in, pick it up. Nathaniel a bit. Yeah. Woo. Oh yeah, that looks great. Well, there's one down. Now we just need to do the one in the back. Oh man. This heavier than the other one. This one heavier. What? Start letting her down. Yeah, that's it. Son of a gun, that went that easy? Done. Dang. That looks pretty good. That's another one down. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, and now we've got all the cylinders to do, so uh, we got a lot of work to do. We just got to keep powering out through. While Nathaniel and Gadget are hard at work, 
Deanne and Chuck focus on the brains of the system. They're designing an electronic trigger. Sensors will detect a bend in the road and tell the pivots when to tilt. Brought Deanne out just to run through some of the test parameters. We want to make sure that we get good triggers and no false triggers. And Deanne's got a box of tricks that's perfect for the job. All right, well, we've got a small MU unit, and this is going to give us roll, pitch, and yaw. So roll, pitch, and yaw. And then in addition to that, it gives us accelerations. So we're going to put this in the car. Basically, when this thing, when it's mounted in the car, starts to roll, we set a threshold in the software. And that threshold, let's say it's 10 degrees, as soon as you hit it, it sends voltage down to whatever we're deploying. So in this case, it's a bell and a siren. But in the final test, it'll be the release for our entire system. To test the device, they're going to drive a dirt road, trying to spring the trigger at the perfect moment. Here we go. Ready? Yep, I'm ready. Moving. Let's go, baby. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, and there's the roll. Crash. Right on cue, the alarm sounds. Time to tilt the trailer. Excellent, D. That was great. Excellent. I think we're set. I think we can hopefully tell Nathaniel and Gadget with confidence that this thing is going to trigger and it's not going to false trigger. At the shop, Nathaniel and Gadget press on, fitting the hydraulic cylinders onto the trailer. When that electronic trigger fires, these pistons should tilt the load. The tilting truck's nearly ready for the biggest day of its life. There. So that's where it'll be, at rest, bumping down the road. And it looks like everything's good and clear. That's perfect. All right, Gadget. All plumbed up. Oh, it looks great. Wow. How late were you here? <laughs> you don't want to <laughs> Really? Nice work, guys. I think it's time to integrate. Take what we've done, take what you guys have done, put it together. And get this thing out to the site. Now, to connect the hydraulic pipes. A tank of nitrogen gas helps power the cylinders. Chuck and Deanne's electronic trigger is the brains of the system. With oil in the tubes, the team will see if their system runs smooth. It all works like this. The brains of the system receive the signal from the road conditions, fires a signal down to the electrical system back here, which opens a valve. Hydraulic fluid flows to the rams and tilts the load. And you are now armed. IMU is on. Okay. Right. Everybody ready? Thanks. <laughs> it's working. Looking good. The system works, but from here, it only gets harder. I was really nervous about the system this morning. I mean, there's some parts in there that are only rated for 2,000 PSI, and we're at 3,500. Um, so there is a lot riding on this, and once it's got a load on it, everything's dynamic and it'll be very different. So we'll see how it goes. We've got to be really careful. The team is heading back into the forest for the final test to see if their tilting truck functions under a 30-ton load traveling 